This is unacceptable. Like, I, I know I'm better than this, right? When things become acceptable, you make no change. When things become acceptable, you stay the course. When things become unacceptable, that's when your life starts to change. I didn't realize it, but at 18, living in that two-bedroom apartment in the ghetto was unacceptable to me. It was absolutely unacceptable. If it wasn't unacceptable to me, you know where I'd be right now? I'd be still somewhere in that neighborhood. Hey, what's up, guys? So welcome to a podcast episode with the Fit CEO. And today's Fit CEO is Danny Morrell. Yesterday, I was actually listening to your very first podcast. I don't even know which one that was, but that's okay. Yeah, yeah th this was in 2017, and you were talking about like why you were doing what you were doing. Sure. And where you stand at the moment, you, were, you said that you were – in trails of hitting a billion dollars in, in sales. Sales. Yes. So how does that? We has did. That, yeah, are you guys that's already beyond. Yeah, that? that's a good question. We did nine hundred and eighty-two <clears throat> million dollars in sales last year. Okay, so the reason why I say all this is because first I want to see, I want to show you guys how awesome Danny Morrell is. Also, give us a little background of um, where he started because obviously he wasn't giving. This wasn't giving. No, no, it wasn't every, gifted. Everything you, was you worked yeah. hard. You yeah. went in, yeah. and you were in the in the trenches. Sure, there was a lot of sweat, blood. Yeah, maybe even like literal, literal some blood, and yeah. you know, and possibly just some headaches that you probably won't wouldn't want to deal with again. Yeah. Well, you know what? I would because it's what made me who I am, and, okay. I, and I think if I could share with anybody, you know, one of the key lessons that you will eventually discover it, it, it's very easy to to look on Instagram and to look at nice cars and to look at fancy things and to want to become wealthy like everybody does that everybody does that so then what's the difference right like what's the difference that makes a difference what's the difference between the, the person who's swiping and looking and liking and the person who's living it because mm -hmm. I think that's what we're all trying to figure out you know, I think the difference, if I could share it with everybody, is number one, you have to realize that we are all the same. We're all equal. And I think a lot of people are losing the battle because of the fact that they see themselves different than other people. I don't see myself any different than you. You shouldn't see yourself any different than me. I don't see myself any different than him. We're all the same people, right? We're all uh, blessed with a gift, and that gift is called life. Now, what we do with that gift, that's a little different. That is a little mm -hmm. different, right? But fundamentally, we're all the same. Fundamentally, we've all been given the same opportunities. Fundamentally, like when we were born, we were given the opportunity to create whatever life it is that we want to create. As we were growing up, we were surrounded by people that meant well, but maybe didn't grow our minds to the level that they should have been growing it. Maybe um, influenced us in negative ways maybe said things like you can't do that maybe said things like no don't grow a business you need to go get a job and maybe influenced us to kind of think like you know what maybe 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 we are a little different right and that's what starts to happen jose is that people start to see themselves not as god made them but as the human being that they were surrounded them uh, around them when they were growing up made them or made them to believe right and so one of the things that sparked this conversation for me was the fact that I genuinely believe everybody has the same opportunity, but the first thing we all have to work on is ourselves. Mm -hmm. We've got to work on rewiring ourselves. We've got to work on reworking all of those thoughts, reworking all of the subconscious beliefs, reworking all of the mental hangups, reworking all of the things that hold us back from becoming who we're intended to become. And the winners, the one that make it, the ones that you know, are living the life, the ones that are making seven figures are the ones that take that battle and take it head on. They're the ones that take that journey. They're the ones that invest in themselves. They're the ones that attend seminars. They're the ones that read books. And then they're the ones that have the courage to say, you know what? 
I don't have to think like that anymore. I don't have to be afraid anymore. I know I feel afraid, but that's, that's just because I've always felt in this situation that way. You know, what if I were a little bit different? What if I could feel a little bit different? And, that, and that's where the journey really begins. And so I don't regret anything that I've gone through because it, it, it made me who I am today. I love that. I think the people that have gone further and are going beyond also spiritually, mentally and financially sure. are the ones that say, I don't regret anything. No. And I actually, I, I wouldn't not want to do any experiences that had, had happened because that gave me the wisdom and created the person who I am now. Sure. So I, when I was listening and I was doing some research, you you were 17 um, when, when you started everything. But prior to that, you guys used to live in New York. In and New then York you City. moved to yeah. Rancho Cucamonga. Sure. No, 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 no. It wasn't okay. that good. Hold so, on. Okay. Hold on. So we lived in New York City. Uh-huh. My parents divorced. So this is at the age of 17? This was at the age of 13. 13, okay. At the age of 13, uh, my mother by herself brought her and our three boys uh, well, her three boys, and brought us over to California, where we lived in uh, Rialto, California. We couldn't afford much at the time. We were literally on welfare, so we lived in a, a really crummy two-bedroom apartment. And, you know, from the age of 13 through 16, my mother didn't know how to drive a car, because you don't really need a car in New York City. You have public transportation, right? So when we got here, don't ask me why. I've always been a good salesperson. I convinced her to buy a car. I just happened to convince her to buy a stick shift. You know, sometimes yeah. like the problems that most people see, I don't see them. I was just like, don't worry, we'll figure it out, right? Sure enough, my mom is like this timid little Hispanic woman who's like really, really afraid and nervous and she's never driven a stick shift. So guess who was the one that drove the family around? It was me. So she was afraid to drive. I literally had drove us illegally between the ages of 13 to 16 until I got caught and then that's a different story. Uh, and so um, at 17, uh, part of me at 18, when I graduated, I, I can vividly remember I'm laying in bed and I just had like these two little, you know, like the Tom and Jerry experience with like the angel and the devil. Yeah. Right. And the angel is saying, like, go for your dreams, like get your family a house and, you know, go start a business. And the devil was saying, no, 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 that's bullshit. Like you have to go get a job and you got to play it safe, whatever. And I just I just chose this guy. I, it, that literally happened. And I was laying in bed and that literally that conversation went through my head. And at the time, really, quite frankly, like I just looked around at all the people that I was surrounded with and I would look at TV. I would look at Beverly Hills 90210 and I would say, how come those people on TV live like that? And all of these people live like this. Like, I don't want to live like this. I want to live like that. Right. And that's where my business journey began. Hey, who said the TV's back for you? See? Yeah. Actually, Beverly Hills 90210. You. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So that's cool because... Um, you were the were you the oldest? I am the oldest. Yes. Okay. And then you also started a couple businesses. Sure. So okay. my so first one business was a tortilla delivery was service. A tortilla oh, delivery service. Yes, a tortilla delivery <laughs> service. I would wake up at three in the morning. I would drive down to the wholesaler. Yes. I had a, a truck, and I would I would literally uh, pack my truck with tortillas, and I would go deliver tortillas to all the stores. So yeah. like even you know I got I had major supermarkets like Bonds, so forth and so on. That was my first business. Yeah. And then that is when you made the, the, uh, the, well, that's when you made the move to real estate. Sure. Right. So, so what is it that inspired that? Yeah. So, okay. And here's another thing, guys, you, you have to have, I don't care if you want to call it a goal. I don't care if you want to call it an intention. I don't care if you want to call it a purpose. There needs to be something that is driving you a, a defining thing that you want to achieve. If not, you get in no man's land. And that's where human beings mess up. Human beings mess up because they're just working to pay their bills. No one will admit that because it's very difficult to admit. Mm -hmm. But the reality is, is that where people's income gets stuck, where people's production gets stuck, is essentially when they find themselves just working to pay the bills. Mm -hmm. And I'm telling you this because I coach people through this, right? You have got, that's, that's called an income builder. You can have a business and still have a job because your business is serving the function of a job, which is just get me a check. Does this make sense? Yeah. And so one of the things that I was committed to at that time, one of the things that got me moving at that time was I looked at our crummy apartment and I said, you know what? I don't want to live in this crummy apartment anymore. I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to do something. And I looked around. There was no dad around. 
My poor mom wasn't going to do it. She was barely like making ends meet. So I just threw out the crazy go. I said, you know what? By the time I'm 21, I'm going to buy a house. Houses at the time were 80,000 bucks. I knew I can get an FHA loan with 3% uh, three down. It's not that much money that I needed to save. I said, I'm just going to do it. I'm just going to do it. And that's what started the conversation with a real estate agent. Mm -hmm. When I met him, I was always just very inquisitive by nature. I asked him the magic question. I said, hey, is there any money in real estate? And he says, yeah, there is. And I go, I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. Here's the second lesson. Uh, the value and, and the lessons you learn are more important than money. Because the lessons you learn can impact the rest of your life. So I was never afraid to work for free. Because I, I don't have a sick emotional attachment with money. So many human beings, they have these, these there's just this weird attachment to money. Like they don't want to in, invest it. They don't want to like touch it. It's because, it's because subconsciously you don't believe you're going to get more of it. When you believe you're going to get more of it, guess what happens? You're, it, it, it's no big of a deal. I was literally with Gary Vaynerchuk last week, and I'm going I'm to sign on to his program. It's a $25,000 a month program. I'm, I'm, I, didn't, I don't even hesitate. I don't even care. But I also didn't hesitate when at 21 I wanted to buy my mama house. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Like hesitation is, is, is something that you have to learn to get past. Because the way I see it is the way you do anything is the way you do everything. And, and, you're, and you're not going to win the game in business if, if, if you're hesitating. So you have to have a goal. At the time, my, mom, my goal was to buy my mom a house. I did it by the time I was 21. I, I literally saw the house. It was in the best community, in the best neighborhood. I want the best. I demand the best for my life. Nothing but the best. And at that time, in the city we lived in, this was like the Beverly Hills. Of, of the city, all brand new, beautiful houses, right? I bought it without even seeing the house. I literally, at the time I was in real estate for two years, I go on to the website, I go on HUD, I check it out, I looked at it, it was for 84,000 bucks, I knew the value of it was 125, I submitted my bid, I bought it. I didn't even see it. That's another example. So many people will wait a minute, wait a minute, no, 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 hold on. I have to see it, I have to inspect it, then I have to go fucking think about it, and then I have to go pray, and then I have to go, the opportunity is gone. It's gone. I didn't even see the house. I just saw it and I bought it. So. You have a lot of common sense. You, you would think a lot of people would have common sense, but more the more I'm around a lot of people that are wanting to do things, they, they also have common sense, but you, the difference that you take a lot more action, like fast, fast action. Like fast, like you have, it's immediate. Yeah. As a matter of fact, I'll tell you how fast it is, Jose. Um, Cause speed literally is everything. Does it piss off your wife? No, <laughs> no, I just move fast. Like I'll give you an idea. See that computer right there? Yeah. So we go live in our studio and we go live on uh, Facebook and on YouTube. I didn't realize this, we had bought a computer but the computer, the, like, the, the, there's so much that uh, feed, or what's it called, Isaac? Uh, there's just so much processing power. Processing power to go live on two different things at once. Yeah. I didn't realize it, that the computer wasn't, it just couldn't handle it. So I asked my guy, please just tell me exactly what I have to do to fix the problem. And he was like, I go, dude, just give it to me. Just <laughs> come on, just, just give it to me. He's like... Dude, you need like the beast computer. Yeah. And I go, okay, what is the beast computer? He's like, you need the, what's it called? The iMac Pro. The iMac Pro Chingadera Thingamajiggy. I go, okay, let's go get it. And you see, that's just another example of speed where most business people, they don't even want to ask the question, what do I have to do to fix it? Why? They're afraid of the answer. They don't want to hear the answer. And so the way I like to think about it is pressure is a, is a privilege. Pressure is a privilege. Pressure is a privilege. The more pressure you have in life, the, the, the more likely you are to succeed, right? So I want the pressure. I demand the pressure. Don't back down from me. Tell me what I got to do to fix it. Tell me what the best camera is. Tell me what the best desk is. I want the best. And if you want the best, guess what? You're going to just demand the best from yourself and you're going to step up with your game. And that's it. When you were 18, Sure. Did, like, was your mindset somewhere similar? Like, was your personality, was it, were you more timid? And if not, what, what was it that allowed you to take the path of wanting and de not 
Well, I would say demanding because that is the yeah, word I, for I, it. It's, no, 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 that's the word. Yeah, it's asking for that higher standard. Sure. And wanting nothing but the best for yourself and for your family. Sure. Was there mentors or books that evolved this part of you? Not that young. That young. Okay. I'll put it to you this way, just because I know this is an important topic for you. Um, in the topic of health, in the area of health, I always wanted to look and feel better. I always wanted to. I went to the gym every single day. I, I, I literally never missed a workout. But what I would do is like Thursday through Sunday, I would mess up on my diet. I would literally like overeat. Like come to think of it, like there was some deep rooted hate of myself going on. There was something wrong going on internally for me to literally be poisoning myself in this fashion. And then one day I finally just looked at the mirror and I finally like, I'm looking at like the, these Instagram dudes and I'm like, these fucking guys ain't gonna be me. <laughs> like, what am I doing? What's, what's, what, what's wrong with me? This is unacceptable. Like I, I know I'm better than this, right? When things become acceptable, you make no change. When things become acceptable, you stay the course. When things become unacceptable, that's when your life starts to change. I didn't realize it, but at 18, living in that two-bedroom apartment in the ghetto was unacceptable to me. It was absolutely unacceptable. If it wasn't unacceptable to me, you know where I'd be right now? You'd be still somewhere in that neighborhood. But the power of unacceptable is what caused the change for me. Was it pain that caused it? Because I think pain a lot of people have a correlation to being bad and evil i see pain as like good that means that you're not happy with something therefore there's a flame under your butt to start moving and doing something about it Dude, but was it something that i don't think it was pain I, I think it was like you see guys we all have to understand that we all have options in life and we all have choices to make in life and I, I, I think it was like, I mean, literally, literally, you guys think, it, I know it sounds funny, but I would watch Beverly Hills 90210. And I would see them driving around in the nice cars and driving in the nice neighborhoods. And then I would go out and look at real life. And I would go like, this isn't the life I live. And I know that's not fake because I know somebody lives their life like that. And for me, it was just the life I was living became unacceptable. That, that, like, given the option. Given the option to choose life A or life B, I wanted the one on TV. You know what I'm saying? And if you break it down that way, guys, because I know health is a big part of your show. When it comes to health, when it comes to business, when it comes to money, when it comes to whatever it is that you're trying to achieve in life, you literally need to just look at your current state. Look at your current life. Look at what's possible out there. And then ask yourself the question, wait a minute, am I going to stay here? Am I going to go there? One of my favorite sayings, I tell, I tell all my, my people this all the time, I'll be damned if I go down in history and earn less than a baseball player. I'll be damned. No one that swings a bat or throws a ball or shoots a hoop should ever out-earn me. They're doing that right now. They're doing that right now. But once my vision comes to fruition, I'm going to out-earn them. Why? I'm going to bring more value to the world than they do. But what does the normal person see? Oh, but they earn what they earn because they play baseball or because they play basketball. Or I see, I don't see it that way. I see, look, they're bringing value, so much value that people want to be around them. How much value do I have to bring in order to achieve that kind of a life? There's no limitations, dude. None at all whatsoever. Yeah, I didn't, I, I mean, when I used to sit down and watch TV, I, I focused more on the cartoons, but my dad worked in construction. Mm -hmm. Oh, he still does. He has his construction company now. And he would take me with him during the summers and we would see big mansions. These were houses next to the beach on the cliff. Sure. And I'm just playing. Like sure. I'm, I'm, I'm still a little kid and I'm watching cartoons. So I didn't get to see that, that show. But I did see the real thing where my dad would work and build houses. And I would see these mansions and these cars and, and the luxury. And I'm just like thinking this is a really this is a lot nice better than what we're living place. right now. Yeah, yeah, we were living yeah. in, a, right? in a little yeah. apartment. Sure, yeah. You know, it's funny you mentioned that because, you know, uh, we're obviously blessed. We, we built our dream home. And every Saturday, every Saturday, the guy, the guy who, who landscapes uh, the, 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 the property, he comes and he brings his two little kids. And I'm always, and I, my wife, my kids, we all are, we're very kind to them. 
you know, we're very kind to them and we want to show them love. Like, you know, there were times like right now it's hot. Like I give them swim trucks and I'm like, go jump in the pool, like have fun. Because what tends to happen guys, you know, especially as minorities, we, we deal with this. We deal with this where we were as little children put into situations where, you know, you know, if somebody has money and they're like an ass, then you have a negative emotional attachment to the meaning of money. Does that make sense? Yeah. And so I think that it, that's one of our responsibilities is that like when you do make it, be kind to people, be nice to people, Sh show, show them what's possible, show them that you can be successful and have a good heart, you know? And so we're, we're very, very conscious of that. Very conscious of that. I like that you mentioned that because living in, uh, I actually grew up right here in Montclair oh, okay. for how many years? Um, maybe like about 20 years. I grew up here in Montclair. I was born in Torrance and it's it's very difficult to leave something that you're used to or comfortable with. Yep. And when I, me and my fiance made the move to San Diego, like everything just, the the glass shattered. Opened because up. It, right. I was so caught in this little circle of how things should be and look like. And people, I should go to college. I should work for corporate. I, I should um, have a family. We should get married. And also the implication. The family enforcing that belief, like, you know, you, you guys got to get married by the Catholic Church. We're doing a lot of the stuff that they want us, they want sure. us to but do. But maybe them. you didn't want to do. Exactly. For you. But we're doing a lot of things that we that's going to make us happy, like being away from the family and being surrounded by the affluent and seeing wealth. And that's helping me in my career and her career as well expand. Sure. And also the people that we're surrounded with and being here talking to you, that's expanding my uh, conscious mind and, yeah. and how I think about wealth because now I could be like yes that's exactly what I thought about so when you lived was there like a point where you were in this little circle this little fence of limiting belief and something happened where it broke through or did you always or were you always you like know, that man, yeah you know so <clears throat> ambitious yeah so I'll give you another example <clears throat> I was in junior high and we had just moved here from New York and I couldn't, my mom couldn't afford to give me lunch money. So you got two options. See, I've, I've, there's no gray guys, it's either black and white. It's either black, you got two options. Option number one for me, you probably gonna go, wanna, gonna wanna grab this Isaac. Option number one for me was stand in the free lunch line with all the other poor kids. I didn't want that. I didn't, I, I wouldn't accept that. So my mom didn't know this. Nobody knew this. I chose option number two. At the time, they would sell this nice cheeseburger. There was one cheeseburger. It like, it was making my mouth <laughs> water right now. I'm just thinking about the freaking cheeseburger, right? It was like, there's this beautiful bun with meat and cheese and they would sell it for like a dollar, maybe a dollar ten. I don't know. And what would I do? This is where I learned my sales skills. I would not have learned my sales skills if it wasn't for the fact that standing in the free lunch line was acceptable for me. I would literally go every single day of junior high, not one day that I miss, and I would just go, hey, do you have 10 cents? Hey, do you have five cents? Hey, do you have a quarter? Hey, do you have, and I would ask everybody. I didn't care. It was either the embarrassment of asking or the embarrassment of standing in the free lunch line. And for me, I chose the embarrassment of asking. And every single day, guess what I had? I got my cheeseburger. Sometimes I would luck out and I would get my cheeseburger and a drink, but at least I got my damn cheeseburger. So you asked me like, was I always this ambitious? I don't know if I was always ambitious. I would just always saw life as like, I got two choices. Either I get the best or I get the crumbs. And I want the best. And, and that's it. There's no other option for me. No other option. Was there anybody in your life that like influenced you to step up to the next level or, or any author or, or someone that you would want to give credit to? My mom. Yeah, I think my mom just naturally gave me, I believe that we all inherit from our, from our, from our, from our, uh, some of us are like really kind. Some of us are very giving. Um, uh, for, for me, what I inherited was my faith. Because if you think about it, it takes a lot of faith. Like I, I could have easily just st stood in that lunch line. Is what I could have done. It takes a lot of faith and really, you know, what we call guts is what it takes 
to be able to go on and say, no, 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 every single day, you got 10 cents, you got five cents, you got 25 cents or whatever the case may be. And, you know, I don't think what I have is ambition. I, I, I don't, I don't think it's, that's what I have. I, I, I think like if I could analyze myself, I, I, I think I just have an immense amount of faith that whatever I want in my life, um, whatever I want in my life, I am going to stop at nothing to not achieve it. And that was given to me from my mom, I think. Like right now you have kids, right? Sure. How three, three boys. Three boys? Yeah. What, what's their ages? Uh, 11, 8, and 2 and a half. So what is it that you have them do now that you wish someone would have done for I, you? She's the way. I like talk to them. I, yeah, I talk to them about money and success so much. <clears throat> so much. You have no idea. And I do it in a very gentle, educational type of way. For so example, example. Okay. I'll give you an example. Uh, we drive by and we see a neighborhood. It's it's under construction. So, you know, there are obviously people working there building the houses. Right? And they're building and constructing the houses. So I'll say, I'll say, hey, Tata. He'll say, yeah. So you see all these nice houses? Yeah, 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 I see them. Yeah. So um, I got a question. Do you want to be rich or do you want to be poor? Black and white. I just say it just like that. And for some of you, it's, you think you're going to be mean, that's fine. Be poor. I don't care what you think. I mean, you, you literally need to get black and white with it. Mm -hmm. They'll go, I want to get rich. I go, okay, then I want you to learn something. You see in this neighborhood right now, do you see people working right now? Yeah, 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 I do. I see, I see them working. Okay, good. You see, they're working hard, right? Yeah, they're working really, really, really hard. Yeah, and you see they're like, they're sweat, they're on top of the roof. They're the, yeah, yeah. See, they're doing the best that they can to provide for their families. So these are really, really good people. Yeah, I understand that. However, they're not the rich people, though, guys. You know who the rich people are? No, who? The rich people are the ones that had the idea to buy the land, to go to the city, to go make the plans, to go develop the property. They also had the faith to go raise the capital, to go put the project together. So the question for you guys is this, who do you want to be when you grow up? Do you want to be the guy on the roof or do you want to be the guy with the idea? All day long I talk to them like that. All day long. I am brainwashing the crap out of my kids in a very good and healthy way. Now, now if they choose someday to be the guy on the roof, I'll support them, whatever they want. But I at least want them to see that there are options and choices available for us. I look back and think, why is it that our Latino community is not thriving the same way like Asian communities do? Because I'll one, you, one thing what. is money. Mm -hmm. They they it's are, not the money. Well, they talk about money, uh -huh. right? Or what, what, the psychology what would be behind your, the money? All right. So what's the, what's the dude? Honestly, psychology? someday I'm just going to do a seminar just for the the Hispanic community because I I I, I have a, a a passion about this. I could probably write a book on this. I mean, there, there's so many underlying issues that keep us from really thriving financially. I think, I think the underlying issue, the number one underlying issue is that subconsciously speaking, we see ourselves different than in this country. We really, really, really do. We see ourselves different than. And the minute you see yourself different than, you could potentially turn that into a story that says, I am less than. I worked very, very, very hard to get past that. Because I remember, I, I remember just in conversations with people, just in conversations with family members, heck, even in conversations with like business people that I started to meet when I was 19 and 20 and 21 and 22. And I remember people around me would say things like, you know what, F the white man and then and then and then and I'd be like, that's stupid. Why would you why would you think that? They were taught that. They didn't have an option. They were taught that. I remember like I'd go start playing golf and I remember like I'd be around some of my friends and they'd get all nervous and they wouldn't want to mess up. And I'd be like, why? Sure enough, just because somebody else was around, they felt intimidated. And I would just study this stuff and I'd be like, damn, man, like we, we struggle with this. Like we, we, we see ourselves different then. So that's the, 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 the root, the deep rooted underlying issue. Then there's a second one. The second one is you got to realize that I am literally in my family. I don't know about you. I'm two generations attached from my grandfather coming to this country. That was a different ball game back then. 
That was a way different ball game back then. That means that when he came to this country, he didn't have the opportunities that me and you have. So that means he couldn't think the way me and you think. You, you need to understand this is very, very important. So when he came to this country, guess what? He did the best he could with the limited opportunities that he had. So what did he do? He went out and got a job or two jobs or three jobs. I remember talking to my wife about this. It's exactly what her parents had to do when they immigrated here from El Salvador. My mother-in-law would have one, two, or three jobs. It's survival is what it is. Oh, Isaac, you want to help me? Hold on. It's a survival mentality. And the problem is, on top of the fact that we see ourselves different then, th th then really what's happening is we're trying to survive. Mm -hmm. We're trying to survive. Third issue, then we finally make it. We finally make it. And we came from a subconscious mindset that said, I am different then and I'm trying to survive. And you finally start to make it. So guess what you do? You go below every penny you have on luxury automobiles and shit that don't matter. I'm watching. I, I, I see it on Instagram. I see it everywhere. You got people leasing two and three cars worth two and three hundred thousand dollars each. They basically, you might as well just grab a noose. Grab, grab, grab it around and just because you can forget about forever providing financial security for your family. You can forget about ever becoming wealthy. You can forget about ever leaving assets to your children because you're so busy trying to fulfill a deep rooted insecurity through cars. Ain't going to make it like that. Ain't going to make it like that. And so. This is deep. This is something that we should be discussing. Not too many people discuss, but it's some serious stuff, dude. Some serious stuff. And I'm telling you because I did that. I'm telling you because when I finally started to make money, Isaac, do you mind just grabbing this and you just sent because it's, you know, whatever. I'm telling you this because when I finally started to make money, that's the first thing I did. I went out and I had a Harley and I had a 7 Series and I had a this and I had a that. And then guess what? I went dead broke. Why? Because I wasn't investing in assets. I, wanted, I wasn't investing in creating a financial fortress. I didn't understand what it meant to have assets and liabilities. I didn't understand. you got people on Instagram right now. They don't have businesses. They're salespeople. It's a, this is a major difference. Salespeople making half a million dollars a year. Okay, great. No problem. Half a million dollars a year. To be honest with you, that's not a lot of money. Where it gets worse is when you're making half a million dollars a year and you're leasing a $300,000 car. I want you to think about that. I want you to think about that you're taking essentially 55 to 60% of what you earn on a yearly basis and putting it into a car. That is called stupid. My Tesla is less than, it's half a percent of what I earn every year. Half a percent. But when I was 22, 23, and I was making $200,000 a year, and I was driving a $100,000 car, I was essentially driving half of what I earned. That's called idiotic. But what is the deep-rooted issue? It's that insecurity that we have, that you're trying to fulfill, that you're trying to show people. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's multiple layers. It's like... It's deep, dude. It's deep. So you got... You got the deep belief system that was given to you as a child. Sure. One, because it's kind of like the subconscious that was downloaded it's kind of from what you your, were around type of deal. For right? your kids or from your parents. My mom learned from my grandfather, Friends. right? Mm -hmm. And the example was, hey, I'm, we're here in this country now. Let's, yeah. let's just let's just try to make it. The then there's uh you're finally making it, but then you're doing stupid decisions still because now you're spending it because you care what people think about you and you do it in a way where it's foolish it's not you're 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 giving the portray you're portraying the people that you're rich you but not wealthy right you got to point it point it up yeah, yeah, yeah. what happened it's just acting up so oh, okay yeah yeah I, yeah i think I, yeah it's it's but again, I don't even think it's portraying. I, I think it's you're you're trying to fulfill it's a gap. That ego. You're, like, you're trying to fulfill. Mm, you know. What is it that people are trying to fill? I mean, it's like, look, I, I when I when I went through that, yeah. I was trying to fulfill. I was trying to fulfill all those years of being in poverty. Mm -hmm. 
I was trying to fulfill having to sit and beg for money for lunch. I was trying to show the world that I had finally arrived. What did you most want, like, then? Then as a young man? You, yeah, that you have now. Who acknowledgement. Was, acknowledgement? Acknowledgement that, that I, I was no longer broke. Or I, I don't give a shit who acknowledges me now. Oh. I, I don't want to build a financial fortress for my family. That's it. What, what was your, your fear back then, too? What was my fear back then? Yeah. Um, I don't. I don't ever mess with fear, dude. I you never didn't even really acknowledge no, it. No, I don't. I don't really. Fear is not a big deal for me. How about now? Do you have any fears? Mm -mm. Why waste your time? No. That's good. It's like something. It reminds me of Tony Robbins. I was at the Funnel Hacking Live event with Russell Brunson. Sure. And Tony Robbins concluded the the event. And one story that he says it over and over and over, but it stuck with me. And it was the time when he went to a track and they were teaching him how to race or, or how to make loops really, really fast. Mm -hmm. And his instructor said, you are going to be very, very close to the wall mm -hmm. when you're making those sharp turns. Oh, yeah. Your goal is to not look at not that look wall. At the wall. It's you look where you want to go. Because as soon as you look at the wall, that is when you crash and everything goes down with you. Right. And that's it. You're done. Right. That it, and he says uh, that it was very hard to not look, look at, at the, the wall, wall because he was wired to right. look at the wall because right. he wanted to see himself hitting right. the wall. <laughs> but it was very difficult to program his mind to say, look away and look at the direction and that's an example it's, of you don't look at fear because then that's exactly where you're going to start going. Yeah. Yeah. Instead, focus where you want to go. What is that vision? What is it that I want for myself? And then only look at that direction and avoid anything else that's around. Sure. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So. Yeah. Man, that's that's awesome. And then you have. When did you write this book? Yeah. So uh, the purpose of the book, guys, it's called the Resilience Roadmap for a reason. Um, you need a lot of resiliency to chase after your dreams. It's, it's kind of cool. Like, this is why I wrote the book. Um, this is the moment that changed my life. It's a picture of my two boys. Oh, yeah. I couldn't afford to fix the air conditioner right here. And so uh, they, were, they were, like, melting hot. And so I just put them in an ice chest to cool them off. And I kind of share a little bit about the story. But essentially, the seven chapters in the book are literally like a roadmap, um, step by step for you to read. To help you build your ideal business in life, essentially, like step by step. Number one, it starts with you got to live by faith, not by fear. That's why I always talk about faith, and I go into in the whole chapter, um, you know, how to how to do that. Who, who would that book be perfect for? I think the book is perfect for all humans who want to do better in life. Awesome. Okay, yeah. so that is so one in the master collection. So I personally believe that everyone should have a master collection. You hear a lot of people talk about oh. The top CEOs read an average of 50 books, sure, but sure. what they don't tell you is that they also have a master collection that they go over and over and over and over again. This is like a, like a backbone. I wrote it in yes. a way where it's like, it's a, it's a backbone book to whatever it is that you want to do, you know? So is there a book that you want your, your kids to also, I mean, be we got yours. Sure. Is there any other books that you like gifting to people? I think that... everybody has to read The Four Agreements. The Four Agreements? Everybody has to read The Four Agreements by Don Miguel Ruiz. That's a great book. Yeah, yeah. it's a great book. And if you're not a big reader, you could just also listen to the audiobook. Sure. So that, that would be a great one. And again, you know, just going into building wealth, building great habits, it's just going back to being surrounded by the people that are actually doing it and the people that are seeing bigger things and doing bigger things and that is by going to the events that's why relentless it's so is important such so an important. important event to yeah, go to it really is so why is it that you have that certain lineup do you want each person to hit like something yeah specific? so yeah yeah uh, so uh, it's a three-day event day one is all about you know we call it mindset but as you can tell my style is i go i go deep and i, and I, tr I, tr I try to help expose four people the limiting beliefs that are causing them to work hard but not get what they deserve to get. So the whole first day is about mindset essentially. Um, the second day is all about sales and how to increase your sales. Um, I, 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 I believe that it's very difficult to find someone in the country with, with my ability to grab a lead and convert that lead into a sale. 
And so I'm going to be teaching people all of that. And then day three is the money day. That's the day where we're going to be focusing on helping people to really understand what it means to develop wealth. So okay, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's going to be an awesome lineup. And so, for example, like day one is Gerard Adams and Sarah Centrella. Uh, day two joining me will be Ed Milet and Andy Frisella. And then day three on the money day is Alex Rodriguez. So you it's, have... it's all like lined up perfectly. Yeah, that is a boss lineup. Yeah, so... it's pretty cool. And it's going to be here in Anaheim, California. Anaheim, California, at the Hilton in Anaheim. And then you said something that was really important for people that are like living outside of the state is uh, if California is too far, your dreams are too small, right? And one of my uh, other mentors, uh, Greg Valentine, said, "Imagine if someone was to tell you that if you live." For example, in New York, and someone wants to tell you, there's a million dollars waiting for you in California. Right. All you got to do is get in a plane and, and go collect up. it. Yeah. So all of a sudden, it's possible. It's like, of course I got the money. Of course I I could buy the ticket. It's the same thing. Sure. sure. It's, 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 but it's in conceptual. It's in an idea. And it's going to be a belief that's going to get you that. Sure. And, and one last thing before we end the show, like you also been focusing on your health. Yeah. I mean, I've been, I've been seeing you like hitting, hitting sure. it hard at the gym. I think you have the gym in your garage. I or, have a gym in my right? garage. Yeah. And it's like a, a nice one. Yeah, it's like, pretty cool. It's, a really it's like a, like a CrossFit gym setup. <clears throat> yeah. yeah. So now you are around 12, 12% and you're going in your goal. 12.1%. Yeah. When I started, I was at about 17% body fat. I'm at 12.1%. You're looking good by the way. Thank you, man. I appreciate that. And, um, and my goal is to get to 9%. I want to get, I'll get to 10% by relentless, yeah. but then I feel like 9% is really where I need to be to, to look and feel the way I want to look and feel. And I'm just going to keep working and following the plan at, at this point in time. It's like a foregone conclusion. Like it's gonna happen. I just gotta. I just gotta stick to the plan. That's it. So and uh, how does how does your like? Because you have a busy schedule, and a lot of people are always talking about. Well, I have a busy schedule. I don't have time. I don't have time. Yeah. How do you make time? Uh, you always make time for what is unacceptable in your life. Got it. And then that is. So what? when people say I don't have time to work out, it's because in their minds, their current physical fitness is acceptable. There's nothing wrong with it. Until they start looking at themselves honestly and saying. I could do better than this, then they'll make time. And why 9% body fat? Just because it's 1% better than 10, and 10 was my original goal. Okay. And then how, how come is it that you are going, you're, you're striving towards that? Is it for like the event? Is it like more of a personal no, goal? No, it's, it's just for, for, again, I got two options. Mm -hmm. I can walk around planet Earth saying that I believe everything is possible, but living as a, a not so much a fat guy, but a chubby guy. Yeah. Or I can go get in shape. It's very black and white. And if, and if I'm in shape physically and I'm in shape financially and I'm in shape uh, spiritually and emotionally, then I can genuinely offer people help, which is really, really uh, why I'm on this planet. Do you think that your health has a strong connection to your wealth? A hundred percent. A hundred percent. Yeah. A hundred percent. Because think about it. Think about the mindset that it takes to wake up every morning at 430 and hit the gym. It's discipline. Mm -hmm. It's you got to have discipline. There's plenty of reasons not to. There's plenty of excuses. And that's why on Instagram, I, I literally post every single day. Every single day I post when I'm at the gym. And I just remind people, like, if I could do it, you could do it too. So absolutely, the, the, the habit of taking care of your physical body, right, is, is I think, a, a foundational pillar of you taking care of your business. Absolutely. I really do. Yeah. And, and also the for some people that are also trying to figure out, like, well, I don't know yet. Maybe I'll just start with jogging. Well, start with something, honestly. Right? Yeah. Just yeah. start. I mean, yeah. starting with something, starting with something, but just to like really give it like an extra boost is, you know, if wealth and providing to your family is important, you know, everything is very mindset, right? Mm -hmm. Like building your business, having a team, motivating them, coming up with ideas is very mindset. Sure. Would you, would you say it's like 80, 80, 90, maybe less percent when it comes to like building your wealth? How much it takes mental power to fuel all that? I don't know about mental power. I mean, you know, for me, you know, I was it was funny because I was telling Isaac, you know, I see it, then I go work to get it. Yeah. I just I, I try to keep things as simple as possible. I don't got time to for confusing thoughts. I'm honestly not the brightest guy in the room. I'm not the smartest guy around. I just I just keep things very simple in my head. 
Yeah. There's something wrong, go do something about it. That's it. Yeah. And then to keep things simple, you gotta also have a clear mind in order to do that. You need to have you need to have practice, having peace of mind, and you do that by I like to call it taking out the trash because Ultimately, that is what your body is holding on to yeah. and also your mind. So when you get a good workout, you're turning on the, the trash people. It's also called the lymphatic system, but it gets rid of what your body no longer needs. And it also, it allows the body to, which is the, the powerhouse to fuel this baby up. Sure. Because a lot of people are always wanting to come up with the best ideas. They want to close a the cell. They want to be in front of people. And they also want to have a lot of energy but not necessarily so that they do more, but so that everything becomes more quality. The people that they meet, the clothes when they're when they're communicating, okay, let's get this deal done. If you don't have the right energy, that is because this baby right here is not powering this up. That's sure. that's coming out out here. Sure. So I absolutely agree with focusing focusing on your health so that you could get the wealth. Yeah. And so where can we get more of you, man? Because it's this has been yeah. an interview, but yeah. a lot of people want to get more. Yeah, I appreciate that. Uh, so dannymorell.com is the site. Um, but I'm, I'm very heavy on uh, YouTube, Instagram, and Facebook right now. So if you guys just look me up there, uh, click follow or subscribe on the blog. I think that's literally the easiest way. We put out a show or a vlog uh, weekly. We're posting right now to Instagram something to just keep your mind in the game at least three to four times a day. We're very serious about what we're doing. We're very serious about our vision. And that is to help. I don't know, man. I just see there's a lot of little you know, boys and girls internally standing at that free lunch line that don't want to be standing at that free lunch line. And if I was able to help myself, I think I can help a lot of people. Awesome. And for the listeners, please, you know, like this, share this, take a screenshot, uh, give us your reviews. It allows us to rank higher so that it helps more people and listen to the, listen to his podcast. He talks about sales, mindset, what it takes to build a business, building systems, having and hiring the right team members. So thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. Thank you, and we'll catch you guys later. Yep. Take care. Bye-bye.